On today's High Watt Soundbite, we're getting lo-fi with tape voices. Is there anything more fun than finding really cool tape voices to use in instrumental music? I mean, today I've got my Sony micro cassette recorder out. This thing is epic. I have got so many little micro cassettes of recordings from over the years of basically just grabbing random stuff like crazy. This is so much fun. Well, 30 years ago, I learned a trick from the late Duane Gettle. Rest in peace, Duane. One of the practices that Duane used to get up to regularly, he would make these videotapes that would be just tiny little snippets of program material that he would find on late night television and stuff. And he would literally go in and record for like one or two seconds and hit pause. And then he'd change a channel and find some other program and he'd hit record again and then hit stop. And then he'd go back and find another channel. I mean, this is like seriously rudimentary back in the day, right? But the result would be mind blowing. Duane would end up with one of these tapes, these video cassettes that would just be just the most random, absolutely obscure stuff that he could find and then cut it all together and it would just make an unbelievable source. Well, when I got exposed to what Duane was up to, I got seriously inspired. I mean, I really understood the power of what he was putting together in these, in these compilations, so to speak. Even if some of the pieces were kind of classic recordings or part of a movie or, or something from a, from, a, from a known source, the snippet would be so short that you sort of wouldn't be able to put it together. I was so inspired by that method that Duane used to get up to that I ended up buying a little micro cassette back in the day. This thing is over 30 years old. And of course I ended up with all these like micro cassettes chocked full of all these killer little samples. And really all it was for the most part was me just randomly recording things all over the place. I'm talking about off TV, radio, nightclubs, the mall, a conversation in a car. Yeah, I used to spend hours collecting and creating all of these samples. And to this very day, there's something awesome about this old micro cassette. You know, I'm well aware that I could go out and replace this with one of these digital recorders out there, but those things are just way too nice. They sound too good. This thing sounds gnarly, really kind of grotty. And that is exactly what makes it work so well for tape voices. Thirty years old and still kicking. Sometimes it still needs a little attitude adjustment. You know, when working on instrumental music, I find tape voices to be so useful and so really powerful to help you build sections. In other words, maybe you finish out one part of a track and as you transition to the next section, it's really a cool idea to sort of drop some instrumentation out and go ahead and just drop in a, a tape voice of some kind. Here's a great example of what I'm talking about. This is just an instrumental song idea that I was working on over the weekend. Had a four bar break, dropped the bass out, and I found a really cool tape voice that I think just fills that void beautifully. Check it. Yeah, I love using tape voices to help bridge sections of instrumental tracks. There's something very special about just how grotty and terrible this thing sounds. In other words, you know, later on, remember the mini disc, the Sony mini disc? I picked up this thing and sort of graduated up to it for my new kind of sampling device, my portable sampler. And this thing is beautiful, but it sounds too good. There's something absolutely gnarly about the, the limited bandwidth of this little micro cassette recorder. What is it? Probably like 600 to 2K or something is the bandwidth. I've used this micro cassette in a live situation too, where, where I played tape voices into a PA. This little recorder 
cuts right through anything on that PA. It's, it's so awesome. You know, I've always considered Kevin and Duane of Skinny Puppy to be the kind of masters of tape voices. They had a side project called Doubting Thomas. Strongly encourage you to check that out if you're not familiar with it. Yeah, Doubting Thomas is just a first class study of how to effectively use tape voices in instrumental music. Yeah, that kind of regular practice that Kevin and Duane used to get up of sampling all the time and using tape voices absolutely rubbed off on me. I mean, I got majorly inspired from that. And to this very day, I, I'm still constantly working at that collection. Yeah, keep your eye out for one of these old micro cassette recorders. You know, some of you could probably even ask your folks. They might have one of these things kicking around the back office they haven't used in 10 years or something. Yeah, secure yourself a little micro cassette recorder, get a couple of extra tapes for it, and start capturing your very own tape voices. <laughs> Yeah.